back to the Solution Series, brought to you by Double Radius and hosted by yours truly, Jeff Holdenrud. Today, we're going to interview uh, Federated Wireless and Bernie Weisenberg. Hi, everybody. Welcome to the show, buddy. Hey, thanks, Jeff. So, Appreciate it. Bernie and I have known each other for years, so this ought to be a really fun uh, episode to watch. Sure. So, so for people out there, you know, Federated is a SaaS provider, right? But yes. for people out there that are new to the industry or new to CBRS and everything else, can you explain what exactly is a SaaS? So, uh, sure, Jeff. Uh, SAS is a spectrum access system, which uh, anybody that's utilizing CBRS bands today have to use a SAS to be able to operate in those frequency bands, which is um, the 365 frequency band. It's kind of a manager, right, or a brain? It's the brain. It's it's basically everything that, um, what, basically what we do with the SAS is that uh, in CBRS, there is... Um, the incumbents, who is usually the Navy, and they come across the coast, mm -hmm. and basically the SAS is there to make sure that there is no interference from the commercial users. Okay. So the SAS actually acts as your kind of semi-licensed back-end system that makes sure that you're plotting radios in the right frequency bands and not interfering with one another. Okay. And that's the function of the SAS. So basically, you know, if you were... A, a CBRS radio, mm -hmm. and you were up and you were performing on channel A or whatever channel's given by the SAS. Correct. And then I'm somebody new and I pop up, it, it's going to talk to the SAS. The SAS will see you're doing it on this channel. Hey, you need to be on a different channel so that we don't fight each other. That's correct. correct. That's exactly what the SAS does. I like and, that. Yeah, it's That's nice. Good. Yeah. Good. Good. So there are a couple SAS providers out there. So what makes you all different from them? Yeah, so I think, um, you know, Federated Wireless is basically the pioneer of spectrum, uh, shared spectrum. And everything that we do as a company is only in regards to shared spectrum. It starts with CBRS, who knows where it goes. Hopefully it goes into more shared spectrum type of uh, ideas. But um, what we do is we offer 24 by 7 NOC support. And I think that our competitors you know, may look at the SAS as being a little more black and white, but I think all of us old uh, RF guys know that everything isn't so black and white, and there are situations that happen in RF and in wireless technologies where you need somebody to talk to, and you need to be able to call your SAS provider and get questions answered right away. Why did this radio go down? Why didn't it go down? Uh, you know, there's all kinds of different intangibles that happen with DPA activity because of, you know, we'll get into the sensor network and stuff like that. But there are kinds of issues where your radio might drop, just like you mentioned before, because you're trying to, you know, associate different channels so you're not interfering with each other. So a lot of times it's just the customer just wants to know what is really going on. And, you know, our competitors don't really tell you what's really going on, but we do. You know, it's kind of like one of those things where, you know, we take spectrum sharing very seriously. We want to make sure that CBRS as an ecosystem continues to grow and work. So, um, you know, our differentiators are making sure that CBRS is reliable, mm -hmm. continues to grow, and we offer that 24 by 7 knock support to make sure that all of our customers are taken care of. And that's part of the price of, uh, you know, when you register a CBSD. Um, not to mention all the, the new feature sets and uh, optimizations that we're doing to the actual SAS to make, uh, you know, less sensitive DPA activities and, you know, having interference challenges that don't necessarily drop a radio. So now we're trying to work on those algorithms to make sure everything is operating even more smoothly as we grow the ecosystem. So. I'm sure another thing is, is the clients are probably happy to know that there's a phone number to reach out and somebody actually answers. Yeah, case. correct. So yeah, always, no, it's always, it's always a winner. Yeah, the, the phone number is a winner. I mean, we've been, <laughs> we've been doing this forever, right? Exactly. If there's nobody to call and you don't know what's going on, uh -huh. I, I think especially when, you know, you're relying on the SAS to operate properly. Mm -hmm. And I think that's most important. If you're jumping into CBRS, you want to make sure that that SAS is not going to give you more problems than you had before. Exactly. Now... Just throw a curveball out there real quick. Do you see, and this is a little future planning, right? Mm -hmm. Do you see SAS playing a big role into the, the new 6 gig release? Yeah, uh, good, good point. So uh, Federated actually is building the AFC, the Automatic Frequency Coordinator. It's, uh, 
you know, we don't have the, the, as much detail as we yeah. do about CBRS right now because it's still sort of going through the FCC. Still evolving. It's still yeah. evolving. Mm -hmm. um, but yes, uh, we are building the AFC, and we're already working with a bunch of different manufacturers and OEMs to try to make sure that that interoperability starts to work. Mm -hmm. And as 6 gig evolves, we'll be right there with that as well. And, and I'm looking, you know, towards the end of this year, I think we'll start to see some six gig products in the market. That'll be good. Yeah, and be I exciting. know the market's excited for it. Yes. You know? yeah, yeah. So when we talk about, uh, you know, we'll talk for a second on ESC. So mm -hmm. the environmental sensing capabilities, right? Yep. So, um, and I might be explaining this wrong, but there basically are sensors across the entire coast. Correct. Right? So that we can stay away from the Navy. We don't want to make them mad. That's right. right. Probably Coast Guard too. Yep. Right? Um, so can you explain how that works and what, uh, how you guys handle that and benefit the client. Yeah, okay, so the ESC network is probably one of the most important functions of CBRS and the SAS in general. Uh, every, every SAS has to have the ESC network in order to be able to give the, the basically the SAS service of you know, protecting the incumbent, which is the, which is the Navy in most cases. Uh, and what we did was we built um, a very, very hardened, redundant, uh, multiple device ESC network, which is super important because, you know, if there's a, a I don't know, a, a hurricane that comes through Texas, for example, and your ESC network goes down, all of a sudden you're not sensing anything and you're not doing anything. That's why we have redundant backhauls, redundant power backup on our EC network. So every single node has, you know, we've retrofitted new enclosures to make sure there's battery backup for days on end instead of, you know, 24 hours and stuff like that, and it's evolving. Uh, we continue to build onto the ESC network, make it more reliable, more redundant, and I think that translates to better performance with the SAS in those terms that we talked about um, of uh, interference, mitigation, and all those things, and DPA activities, and false alarms, and all these other things that have happened in, our, in, our, in the CBRS ecosystem. Now you see a year in already, uh, post-commercialization in January of last year, uh, everything is becoming more reliable, better, and it's all because of the ESC network. Okay. Now, before anybody actually comes in and starts, you know, you know, registering CBSDs and things like that, there's, there's certain certifications and, and planning that has to be done ahead of time. Yep. So can you talk about that and how you guys are, what you're offering? For yeah, it? sure. So... Uh, in CBRS, any person that installs a radio has to be CPI certified, okay? So uh, Federated is an accredited CPI certification course. In fact, uh, you can buy them right through Double Radius. You guys actually carry the keys and resell those CPI certifications. But anybody that's touching a CBRS radio and actually activating it needs to be CPI certified. So there's a course. It's an online course. You guys resell it, mm -hmm. sell it to the customers. It's pretty inexpensive. It takes, you know, four hours to complete. Um, and it's a good course. Listen, it, it teaches you a lot. I went through it myself to become CPI certified. Um, it's good to have, and, and we're continuing to grow the CPI ecosystem and evolve. So the more people that get trained, the better it is for CBRS. And when we say CPI, we're not referring to the security company. So make sure that you... Uh, <laughs> You go to the right place and get the right certification. Yeah, certified right. professional installer. Exactly. Right. CBI certified. Uh, exactly. Yeah. So, um, a CBSD is a, is a citizen's broadband radio service device. Okay. Now, how simple is it to register a device or get set up on your SAS? Yeah. So, I mean, it's it's really simple. Once you go through that CPI certification course, you get to see our GUI. You get to see how a device is registered. Basically. You'll have that CPI key. You'll be able to go on. It's actually basically just a few clicks, choosing the right channel parameters, and putting it up, and the SAS does all the work for you. So it, it truly is a point and click. It's not as scary as people think. I know that LTE in general, you know, in our industry, has always seemed to be a little more complex mm -hmm. than, you know, our proprietary competitors out there. But I think as we evolve more standards-based, LTE getting more simple with the different OEMs that you guys carry, uh, it's it's evolving and the OEMs are working with us and everything is becoming simple. So it depends on the OEM on registering your CBSD because different OEMs use their own domain proxy yep. versus using our domain proxy. So there's some uh, differences between the OEMs. However, all seem to have nailed it down to make it a really simple process. Good. That's glad to hear. Mm -hmm. So now when you and I were, were talking yesterday, um, you know, we talked briefly, and this is still a little premature, mm -hmm. but, um, you know, you had mentioned to me something about like a, a spectrum exchange. 
Yeah. Can you can you tell our viewers a little bit about uh, kind of what might be coming down the pipeline? Yeah, yeah. This is exciting for us. We are releasing a new product. It's going to be called Spectrum Exchange. Uh, the idea of Spectrum Exchange is to basically utilize the pool of PAL license winners that may or may not be either utilizing a you know a particular PAL in a particular county. Uh, you know, some of the big winners of PALs bought you know as we all know billions of dollars worth of PALs. A lot of them aren't using all of them or some of them in different markets versus other markets. Uh, so we basically wanted to create a sort of Airbnb type of model yep. where you're going online and you'll be able, you'll have the ability to both lease your PAL spectrum or buy a PAL spectrum from somebody else that's leasing and we're just going to be the middleman, uh, basically that pane of glass that you'll work through to get those deals done and it's all work through with uh, FCC and Kajai, everything is being worked out together. So we're pretty excited about that product and I know a lot of our customers are excited to start to be able to maybe monetize some of that uh, PAL you know, spectrum that they were that they purchased. So yeah, the uh, we're pal, pretty excited. The PAL is that protected piece because it's it's owned by the whoever won the bid. So um, obviously it's a better place to be than the GAA. Correct. So perfect. That's been a great a lot of great information for us today. We hope that you all have enjoyed this. Uh, please reach out to your sales reps. Go to Federated Wireless. You can learn more about the things they're offering. Um, reach out to your sales rep. Talk to them about how we can help you get set up with Federated. And, uh, you know, once always, thank you for, uh, you know, enjoying this segment. I hope you learned something, and we'll look forward to seeing you the next time. Have a great day. Thanks, everyone. Thanks, Jeff.